Here's an addition reaction that is a classic in organic synthesis. It's been known for a long time and finds widespread use. In the presence of certain metals, hydrogen is added to an alkene, making two carbon-hydrogen bonds. As you can easily see from the example I've chosen, this reaction is stereoselective. Hydrogen adds with syn addition. Both hydrogens add to the same side of the pi bond. When examined in great detail, this reaction is fairly complex, but the fundamental aspects of this catalytic reduction are fairly simple. Take a look. The metal catalyst presents a surface that coordinates both hydrogen and the alkene. Whether the molecules are in solution or in gaseous form, when they're present in the surface of the metal, hydrogen molecules coordinate to the surface of the metal in a way that breaks the sigma bond holding the two hydrogens together and forms loose bonds with the metal surface. Separately, the alkene pi bond coordinates to the metal surface. While this doesn't break the pi bond, it makes it susceptible to addition. So the next step is much like a radical reaction, where the pi bond is broken and one sigma bond is made. This leaves the organic molecule at the metal surface next to a hydrogen atom and a radical on the carbon to bond to that hydrogen atom. The hydrogen and carbon promptly bond the result is a reduced alkene, where we have two carbon-hydrogen bonds formed. Because this all happens at the surface of the metal, both hydrogen atoms must add to the same side of the pi bond. When we label the four things that are attached to the alkene carbons, 1, 2, and 3, 4, we see that their relative spatial arrangements don't change during the reduction. 1 and 3 are on the same side of the alkene, and 1 and 3 are both back in the product. 2 and 4 are on the same side of the alkene, and they're both forward in the product. This is the result of syn addition and maintains the stereochemical relationship of all four groups attached to the alkene carbon-carbon double bond. This is a key feature of this catalytic hydrogenation. So let's take a look at a few examples of the application of this reduction. When a simple alkene is treated with a hydrogen and a metal catalyst, two hydrogens are added. In a case like this, where we don't make a stereogenic center, there are no stereochemical questions. It's simply a matter of reduction of the alkene double bond. When there are two different things attached to at least one of the alkene carbons, the potential exists to make stereogenic centers. In the case I've shown here, adding hydrogen to the left carbon creates a stereogenic center. Adding hydrogen to the right carbon that already has a hydrogen doesn't. So we make both the S and the R stereochemistries at the only stereogenic center we generate. These stereoisomers result from approaching the pi bond from above or below, and they have equal probability, so we make a racemic mixture, equal amounts of the two enantiomers. Now take a look at the E isomer. When we do the reduction, we get the very same result, a racemic mixture of the two enantiomers. Because we're making only one stereogenic center in the product, whether we start with E or Z stereochemistry of the alkene is immaterial. We get exactly the same result. However, take a look at this. Now we're looking at an example where two stereogenic centers are formed. Upon catalytic reduction, the E alkene makes the SS stereoisomer and it's an antimer, the RR stereoisomer. On the other hand, when we start with the Z alkene, we make a different pair of enantiomers. We make the SR and RS enantiomers. So we see that because we have syn addition, when we're creating two stereogenic centers simultaneously, this reaction is stereospecific. E and Z alkenes give different stereochemical outcomes. The bottom line is we must pay careful attention to the stereochemistry of the products, remembering that the addition of the hydrogen molecules is syn. Both hydrogens add to the same side of the alkene. We started by looking at the reduction of a cyclic alkene. We've looked at several acyclic examples. Now I want to return to one other cyclic alkene. This molecule is somewhat more complicated because it already has a stereogenic center, and I've shown that we're starting with one single enantiomer. Remembering that the reaction proceeds with syn addition, we can write the structures of two products that will result. One of the products results from the hydrogen adding to the bottom side of the double bond, the other product results from hydrogen adding to the top side of the alkene. Here they are. When hydrogen adds to the bottom, we make the R and S stereochemistries. And when it adds from the top, we make the S and the R stereochemistries. 
These are not enantiomers because in each case, the stereogenic center that has chlorine attached is R. These stereoisomers are diastereomers. They're the only two that are made, and because they're diastereomers, we can expect they'll be made in unequal amounts. It's easy to imagine that this alkene will interact with the surface of the metal, preferentially with one side over the other. For instance, in this molecule, the chlorine is sticking out above the ring, which we can imagine will sterically interfere with interaction with the metal surface. In any case, without trying to predict which stereoisomer will predominate, we can be confident that we'll make these stereoisomers in unequal amounts. And we can confidently write just these two stereoisomers because the reduction always proceeds with syn addition. So there we have it, catalytic hydrogenation of alkenes using a metal and hydrogen gas. Typically, the yields are very good. The reaction always proceeds with syn addition, and therefore we need to take a careful look at the stereochemistry of the products. When we create one or two stereogenic centers by adding hydrogen to the alkene, we will create either a pair of enantiomers in equal amounts, or a pair of diastereomers in unequal amounts.